What's good YouTube, Mr. Crazy Person here, back with another video and today we are going to be covering the topic of grinding. Now, as BDO players, grinding is something that we have to do a lot of, provided we're not life skillers. And essentially, because we spend so much time grinding, it's beneficial to know the ways in which you can make your grind more efficient and the ways that you can increase your grind speed and therefore overall spend less time doing so. Today's video, we're going to go over some simple things like rotations, combos, debuffs, etc. And then get into the more complicated things like crystal setups, different types of food and elixir buffs that you can use that combo well together. And why you might want to use a different combination in different spots. If this video does help you, don't forget to leave a like and drop a comment as it helps the video and it gets it out to more people who actually benefit from content like this. Um, don't forget to leave a sub for more guides and for more content in the future. And I also do stream over at twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Crazy Person if you guys want to catch me outside of a YouTube video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, so the first thing I want to talk to you about today is your rotations and your pulls. Now, this is very important for when you're grinding at any spot and the reason for this is if you're dashing between random packs and just killing whatever you can see, you're going to have occurrences where there's nothing for you to kill and during this time you're essentially not earning any money as you're waiting for mobs to respawn. Now, having um, a good rotation will mean that as you're going from pack to pack, the pack at the beginning of the rotation is respawning a little bit before you get there so that there's little to no downtime between the time that it takes for you to get from the start back around and then to the start again and therefore there's always something for you to be killing now if you're not doing this well you're gonna end up seeing a reduction in the amount of trash power you can get and therefore the amount of money you can get it's also important for you to be able to pull mobs into a designated location so for places like star's end as they don't die in one shot so you're going to want to put multiple of them together so that you can burst down maybe two smaller packs with only one combo okay guys so the next thing i want to talk to you guys about today is your combos and why you're going to want to have certain skills within your combos so to start off with, you're going to want to have an AP buff. Now, the reason you want an AP buff is because it's going to mean that every attack you do after having said AP buff is going to hit harder. The one that I use for my combo with my ninja is seamless as it gives me a melee AP buff plus 10 for 10 seconds. After this, you're going to want to DP debuff the mobs. Now, Bloodthirst Katana Shower has a minus 20 DP for 10 seconds. And I've also got a further DP debuff on my skill add-ons as well as an attack speed buff. The attack speed buff is going to mean that I can throw out all of my other skills after Katana Shower quicker than if I didn't have the attack speed buff. And because of this, it's going to fully optimize the amount of time that it's going to take me to kill a pack. Um, and you're going to want to do this because the quicker you can kill a pack, obviously, the more trash loot you get. And you're going to be able to kill a pack quicker with a combo that you've crafted to perfection than if you were just throwing out skills and you didn't know what you're doing. I would advise looking at a class guide for your specific class as generally these class guides will show you a combo that is more often than not min maxed and if not then you can tweak certain things to fit your preferences. All right guys, another thing that's really going to improve your grind speed, especially if you've done it incorrectly, is your skill add-ons. Now, feel free to have whatever skill add-ons you need, but obviously try and have a similar setup to the skill add-ons that I've got going on here. And just make sure that your reasons for putting certain add-ons on certain skills are actually valid. So as I said before, Seamless on my Ninja is the skill that I use to start my combos. And because of this, I like to have an extra damage to monsters plus 20 on my Seamless, as it means that every attack afterwards is obviously going to do more damage. Same for crit hit rate, so that I'm crit um, critting more. Blood Dust Katana Shower has DP Shred, as it already has a DP Shred on it. So because it's already got DP down on it, having an extra dp shred is going to really increase the amount of reduced dp that i can put onto mobs and onto other enemies having a double dp shred is also really good just in pve and pvp an attack and casting speed you're going to want to try and have attack speed up on more than one skill so i've got it on here but i do also have it intrinsically on two other skills so i don't need to put it on too many in my skill add-ons back and crit um, hit damage i like to put this these two on the skill that I well use to hit hardest and do the most damage which for me is Serpent Ascension and I don't really use Serpent Ascension from in front so going for back attack damage is ideal. For places like Star's End you might want to go down attack damage instead of back attack damage because most of the time the mobs are on the floor when you group them around the crystals etc and that's kind of what I mean when I say just make sure that you're putting on the right add-ons for firstly where you're going and secondly your class and the situation that you're in. Other than that increased accuracy movement speed and just a couple other quality of life skills that i like to um that i like to have for when i'm grinding 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to go over are loot scrolls and the pros and cons of all three. So to start off with, you will always be getting loot scrolls. You get them from events, you get them from just random things that PA decide to put in the game, from login rewards, and also from having a value pack active, you get one a day. Now, realistically, unless you're grinding 10 hours a day, you won't run out of normal loot scrolls, so you should be fine. And you want to be grinding with a loot scroll 100% of the time if possible, as it increases the amount of money that you can earn during the hour. Grinding without loot scrolls is quite inefficient, and at that point, you should probably look for something else to do. Um, the three different types of loot scrolls, you've got the normal 30 minute loot scroll, you have a normal hour long loot scroll, and you've got an advanced hour long loot scroll. The first two, so the 30 minute and the 60 minute normal loot scrolls have exactly the same stats, but the only difference is the time frame. So for people who decide that they don't want to grind for too long or just physically can't because it bores them to death, you have access to 30 minute loot scrolls that are a little less, you know, time consuming, obviously. Um, you can get these by doing simple alchemy on the normal blue loot scrolls and that will turn one of those into two 30 minute green loot scrolls and these two have exactly the same stats so they've got a 100% drop rate chance and um 50% drop amount so what this means is that you're going to get 50% extra trash and if you weren't losing uh using a loot scroll and because of this you're going to earn more money now the advanced loot scroll is a bit different and there are pros and cons to using this so as i said for someone who doesn't grind too often you're not really going to run out of loot scrolls and you're going to have a bunch of them and if you're able to get through all of the hour normal loot scrolls then you should because you're going to have for example 100 hours if you have 100 scrolls of 100 percent drop rate and an extra 50 percent drop amount right but if you use the advanced scrolls which cost two normal loot scrolls through heating to make you get 100% drop rate still, but you get 100% drop amount instead of 50. So what this is going to mean is that you're going to get more trash per hour and therefore earn more money like that. But the downside to this is that in the future, you're going to run out of loot scrolls and you're going to have those potentially 50 hours where you're not going to have a loot scroll active and you're going to be missing out on that 100% drop rate chance for things like distos and just other items that are quite expensive and sell for a lot you're not going to have a loot scroll available because you've used all of them for what increased trash so realistically if you're able to get through all of your normal loot scrolls you should if you're someone who can only afford to grind for like an hour or two a day then using the advanced loot scrolls to get through all of them is viable and is not going to hurt you too much in the long run so it all depends on realistically how much you grind how much time you have and how many loot scrolls you've got available Right guys, the next thing we're going to talk about is Agris Fever. Now, Agris Fever is actually very, um, very nice to grind with because it means that you earn more money for less time. So as you can probably see from the widget, having Agris Fever actually increases the amount of junk that monsters drop by 150%. So this means that, for example, on an hour where you might only be getting, let's say, 4k trash, you end up with 6k because, well, you're getting more trash from the monsters. Um, from what I'm aware of, I don't think this has changed. The best place for you to burn Agris is still at Histria. Um, and the reason for this is that the amount of trash that they drop compared to the amount of Agris that they use is lower than, for example, somewhere like Star's End. So, for example, um, at Histria, let's say that one monster will use five Agris and it will drop six trash. At Star's End, it might use 10 Agris to drop the same amount of trash. And therefore, you want to be grinding at the spot that is going to use your Agris Fever most effectively. Some people don't really care, but if you're really trying to min-max your Agris, then Histria, go there for a little while and then go to wherever else you want to go. I would also suggest that you do the Book of Margahan, and I will show you now why you should do those. Um, I believe it is... No, that's Doran Morgrim. Where is it? There we go. So I haven't actually finished all of it. I've done the first one, the second one I haven't finished, but as you can see, you actually get max points um, for your Agris Fever on completion of these books. Now, the reason that you want to do them is because the more points you've got, well, the better off you are, you can use more Agris. I think it caps out at 100k because obviously I've got another 10k that I can get and right now I'm on 90. And you can also get more recovery points per day for your Agris Fever when you complete these books. All right, so the next thing we want to talk about today is reforms. Now, if you're grinding, you want to be grinding with as many, well, substats as possible to aid in your grind speed, right? So an example of reforms that you can use are firstly, not these ones. You're not going to touch these because realistically, you're not going to be using anything Rosar related that can be reformed by these. You're going to be using Kutum and Zarka and Dandy, right? So what you want to be looking at 
are the new cups that were added with the Hadoom servers. So for example, Cup of Dwindling Starlight can be um, applied to both of your rings and will apply each one with an extra crit hit damage plus 3%, which will obviously give you an extra 6% crit hit damage and having the added damage from criticals, which you're going to be hitting essentially all the time if you've got max crit, will increase your grind speed by quite a, a, a noticeable margin. You've also got the Cup of Tragic Nightfall, which are the new belt um, reform stones that were added, which gives you all AP plus three. I would leave these till the end because it's a flat AP bonus in, as opposed to a percentage one. And well, percentage bonuses just work better for um, everything in general. You've also got your Garmoth. That's just not how you spell Garmoth. You've got the Inverted Heart of Garmoth, which you can apply to your sub weapon and your Awakening weapon. For your sub weapon, it gives you max HP, more stamina, and special attack evasion. Now, for grinding, that's not going to be too useful. But if you apply it to your Awakening weapon, you can get an extra two crystal slots and also an extra critical hit damage plus 3% to cap out at 9% when added with the ring reforms. Now, with those two slots, you can also put in two crystals to your Awakening weapon, which will further increase your grind speed. Um, I would advise not using the ones for human damage because you're going to be grinding and going for Akrad crystals which will give you an extra 10 AP against monsters. Now all of these things added together are going to increase your grind speed for example when you can't increase your AP um, to just get those flat AP bonuses. Those are obviously more important but if you can afford or get RNG carried to being able to get these extra bonuses from reforms then you should as they are extremely useful. Alright guys, so this is going to be your general PVX crystal setup and what you're going to want to use. So what I mean by this is for PvE and PvP, um, because you're obviously going to have to fight people when you're at places like Star's End, Sakrai, etc. So you're going to want to have a crystal setup similar to this one. So in your main hand, precision crystals. Now when you get to some of the higher end spots, monsters start to have increasingly high evasion. And if you don't have a pen Zarka, then you may or may not be able to keep up with this and achieve the 100% accuracy rate now or 100% hit rate sorry if you can't hit that then obviously you've got methods of getting to that point and one of these is the bmc precision crystals in your main hand and also the gin viper crystals gin vipers are extremely expensive and i would not suggest buying these unless you have the gear in order to actually survive in this what you're grinding same with the Hoom crystals as Hooms are also quite expensive and I will show a cheaper setup afterwards but this is going to be the optimal one for most spots in the game and also most PvP scenarios. So in your offhand you're going to want to have Corrupted Magic Crystals and these are by far the best crystals to have in your offhand. The reason for this is that they give an extra 10% critical hit damage each. They also give 2% I mean 2 AP hidden each as well for a total of 4. Um, and at the cost of minus four damage reduction, you also gain a two piece set effect of an extra 2% crit hit damage. All of this added together adds up to 22% extra crit from your offhand um, crystals and also hidden four AP. If you're able to get a Karanda or Garmoth Heart for your awakening weapon, put Acrad crystals in there. And then for everything else, you're going to want to go Hoom in your helmet and boots because the Hoom set effects are quite simply just amazing for survival you get an extra 300 hp you get an extra 10 dr you have a little bit of evasion some more accuracy grapple resistance etc it's just really good for most scenarios and then in your chest once again by far the best crystals to have in your chest are special attack evasion these are extremely cheap and for whatever reason are still just the most meta in the game because obviously if you're getting hit by a special attack which you will be most of the time so whether that's a back attack a down attack um air attack etc that is going to allow you to avoid 20% of the damage that you would take for the, from that, or rather 20% of the hits from it because of the special attack evasion you get. So make sure you got these. Now, the cheaper setup will come after, but if you are able to afford all of this stuff, do, as well as obviously completing the books so that you can get your AP and DP higher for, well, essentially free. So guys, here is what I, well, like to call the cheaper setup and also depending on the situation you might actually prefer to run the stuff so firstly we'll go over the offhand we've got magic crystal of infinity critical hit which gives you an extra 10 percent crit hit damage similar to the corrupted crystal except the only difference is that you don't get the extra hidden four ap and also the extra two percent from having two of those crystals on so it's realistically two percent less um crit critical hit damage and four less ap so not too big of a difference considering you'll be saving yourself about 200 million silver. 
Then in the helmet and boots, we have switched the Hooms to combined Magic Crystal Macalod. And the reason we've done this is because, like we said before, Hooms are quite expensive. And also the nice add-on of having Macalods is that you get the extra hidden AP. So if you can't afford to keep yourself alive, well, you can at least afford to do a bit more damage by getting Macalods. And that extra AP adds up to a total of 10. In the gloves we've got the black magic crystal precision which also gives you accuracy but instead of giving you 20 accuracy like the gin vipers do this only gives you eight and a little bit of extra grapple resistance which is also pretty good for those pvp scenarios that you might come across when dueling for your spot now one thing that i found to actually be quite good especially when stacking up um flat ap at what some of the lower end spots so for example maybe arkham or history in your gloves you can actually use these dark red, red fang crystals and the reason for this is that they give you an extra 10 EP just from your gloves. If you have a pen Zarka, then you're going to be at 100% accuracy rate um, or 100% hit rate on mobs, sorry, without having the extra accuracy from your gloves. So by having these, you actually do get an extra 10 AP. Now, it's hidden AP and it's not sheet AP, obviously, but it's 10 AP nonetheless and it does work. You also gain critical hit plus four and that is also really good for those scenarios where you want to use a frenzy draw but you don't have the other perfume to get your crit to five and in a situation where you don't have that perfume but you've got perfume of courage you can then stack on top of that even more flat ap which is yes hidden but still does work for a total of 40 extra hidden ap against mobs now i've tried this on for example i think it was my warrior at Histria and i was grinding history at a pretty good speed with this setup at i think 235 ap which is ridiculously low for history especially if you want to be efficient but considering the ap that i was at and the buffs that i had on it was actually very good and i think i am going to do a series where i show off how to grind at certain spots with a little bit less ap because i know some of you guys find it boring grinding wherever you're grinding and you kind of just want to go to those higher end spots so these are just some secret, like, well not secret, but some hidden gems that people don't use too often. Macalod, Dark Red Fang, and Magic Crystal Infinity Critical Hit. Make sure you have these if you do not have the Corrupteds. Alright guys, one honourable mention that I forgot to go over in the Crystal section was the Ancient Crystal of Crimson Flame Power. Now, once again, it's an extra 10 hidden AP. So we've got 10 hidden AP from here, we've got 10 hidden AP from the gloves as well as maxed out crit because we've got crit hit plus 2 on both. You've also got the Macalods in your helmet and your shoes to add up to a total of 30 hidden AP. Now if you are going to run the setup that I mentioned before which is the Frenzy and the Perfume of Courage which is viable because you'll have max crit anyway, then you'll have a total of 50 hidden AP as well as the 30 monster AP from the Frenzy and the also crit hit damage 10% from Frenzy 2. Now, all of this stuff added together really allows you to shred through mobs quicker than you should be able to, especially at certain AP caps. But I can't stress the importance of making sure that you have enough accuracy before you try something like this. Otherwise, you're going to screw yourself over. Um, obviously, it's not the most optimal. But like I said, for guys who don't have the amount of money necessary to buy everything that you would want to be optimal, this setup is actually relatively insane. And... Obviously, like I said before, I'm going to make that, that um, series where I show you guys the crystals and stuff that you can use in different areas to actually maximize your efficiency, especially at lower AP uh, brackets. But as I said, if you do want to go this route, just make sure you have the accuracy necessary. Make sure you're running Begs Gloves because you get accuracy from Begs and also running Zarka at Pen if you are able to. Now, there are accuracy calculators online. Um, so it shouldn't be too hard to come across an accuracy calculator and then you just input your accuracy and it will tell you whether or not you're at 100% hit rate and as long as you are then you're fine to try something like this especially at areas like Histria where you will see the most difference from doing so. Next we are going to talk about Blackstar gear. Now Blackstar gear is specifically PvE gear essentially and it has intrinsic buffs that will allow you to grind faster. There's Blackstar main hand and awakening weapon and at Tet, which is the equivalent of a Zarka or Dandelion pen, these give you extra damage to all species and also to all monsters. So as you can see, Tet Blackstar Sorokatana gives you extra AP against monsters plus 15. Now, that is really going to help your grind speed, especially if you are mainly a PvE player and you don't do PvP much. Even then, I would still suggest getting Blackstar gear because Blackstar is just amazing in general, but it is quite expensive. The only downside to Blackstar is that you can't Kafras it for easy um, AP brackets. So for example, I've got 
my awakening weapon on my Hashashin C3 so that I can hit the 269 awakening bracket. But if I had a black star and it wasn't pen, then I wouldn't be able to hit that bracket. And it's just things like that that you might want to think about before deciding what you're going to get. But obviously the added AP against monsters plus 15 would make up for me not being able to cut to that bracket anyway. Like I said, you've also got this for main weapons. So just to show an example, I'll use the Shamshir, go to Tet, main hand, you've got extra AP against monsters plus 32, which is a huge number. And then you've got 2% crit hit damage, extra damage to all species, etc. Alongside this, you should always be grinding with Kutum. Always. Even though Nuva is better than Kutum at, I believe, 261 to 269 AP, you should still use Kutum because of the DP and just the added survivability of having it. Um, Kutum at Tet gives you an extra 58 AP against monsters. So if you're not grinding with Kutum, then just that one simple change is really going to show you just how strong it is. And obviously, as I said before, put Corrupted or Crit Damage Crystals into your offhand. But Kutum and Blackstar are two of the best PvE like items that you should be using, especially if you're mainly focused on grinding. Definitely go Kutum, definitely go Blackstar. So in order for you to grind optimally, you're going to want to have buffs on your character. Now there are a lot of buffs in the game, um, but we're going to mainly focus on the ones that will obviously are useful and we're going to be using mostly for grinding. So there's a lot of different combinations and different like setups that you can use depending on what spots you're grinding in. And obviously you'll be able to kind of figure out what it is that you need in order for you to be able to grind in your spot at a better rate. So for example, if you're going to Fogans and you're dying every two seconds, well you're dying you're losing money rather than gaining money because you're probably going to lose crystals etc so for those kinds of um situations you're going to want to use things that are going to help to keep help to keep you alive if you're grinding somewhere like star's end which doesn't require any more than like 310 ap then you can really start to spec for more damage and trying to kill the mobs quicker so we'll start off with the buff foods right the first food is the simple cornmeal you can get this from the Oasis vendor um, as well as the Exquisite Cornmeal and essentially this is going to be your PvE buff. Now this is going to last for 120 minutes so two hours and it's got a bunch of different buffs that can help you ranging from extra AP against monsters, you've got critical hit, a little bit of extra health, down attack damage which is great for places like Star's End and you also take less damage from monsters. If you look at the exquisite corn meal, it's got slightly different buffs. So things like more AP, more accuracy, all evasion, back attack damage, crit damage, etc. Now, both of these are quite good for grinding. Um, I think overall, the simple corn meal is better for grinding if you have things like accuracy and you don't need more accuracy. But uh, the exquisite corn meal is going to be the one that you're using most of the time. The reason I say this is because when you're grinding, especially at the higher end spots, you're going to have to duel for spot quite a lot. And when you're dueling for spot, things like extra AP against monsters is not going to do anything for you, you know? Uh, things like less damage from monsters is not going to do anything for you. But if you've got all resistance plus 4%, all crit damage, back attack damage, things like evasion, accuracy, all AP, these help you not only in PvE, but also in PvP. So for the majority of time, you're going to want to use the exquisite cornmeal. The only time I would suggest using the simple cornmeal is for places where you're literally dying and you can't survive because you don't have enough DP, but you still want to stay there. On to the droughts. Now you've got giants, you've got frenzy and beasts. Giants is the one that you're probably going to be using the most as it's very simple, just gives you more AP, a little bit of health and all special attack damage. So back attack, um, down attack, etc. The Frenzy one is very good when combined with Spirit Perfume Elixir, and we'll go into that in a minute. But the Frenzy Drought gives you obviously an extra 30 AP against monsters, more accuracy at the cost of less DP. But to go against this, you obviously got the HP recovery, which obviously will take more damage, but you'll be getting more of your health back at the same time. And also the big 10% extra crit damage, which is quite frankly, just a little bit insane when it comes to PVE. Beast Drought is obviously really good. It gives you the extra AP against monsters as well. Bit of skill XP, bit of combat XP. You recover some HP and you also take a lot less damage from monsters, which is reduced 10%. Now, when I said that you could obviously combine buffs together to give you an advantage in certain situations, the Beasts and the Simple Cornmeal together give you less, 16% um, less damage taken from monsters. 
Now, having 16% damage reduction from monsters is quite good, especially for survival. But if you don't need that, then obviously you wouldn't use this setup, which is why I said that when you start grinding, you're gonna start understanding what you as a specific player in a specific area need in order to be able to grind there. Now, because Frenzy doesn't give you the crit that obviously Giants and uh, Beast does, it doesn't give you the level of crit, sorry. So the crit hit level, it doesn't give that to you. You need to use Spirit Perfume Elixir unless you've already got crit hit rate five. Now, this elixir is obviously um, great because it means that you can use Frenzy and still have the crit level and the crit level is the most important thing when it comes to actually getting critical hits. If you're not getting critical hits then crit hit damage isn't going to do anything for you and that's why these two are very commonly used together. Giants and Perfume of Courage obviously complement each other very well as it's quite simply just raw AP. It's an extra all AP plus 30 and it doesn't matter where you are in the game, 30 extra AP is going to help. The only downside to this is that when you get to places where um, flat AP isn't going to help as much, so like at the really high end spots, having the extra 10% crit hit damage is going to do more than, well, 30 AP. You've also got the Calx Elixir, which gives you damage reduction plus 15, a little bit more health and overall just makes you more tanky. But as stated before, when you're trying to figure out what setup you want to use, you could, for example, if you're dying too quickly, use a Calx Elixir, a Beast Drought, and obviously Simple Chrome Meal, which is going to give you a lot of damage reduction against monsters. Vel's Heart is by far the best alchemy stone in the game. And you're going to want to have this if you can afford it. It's, well, right now it's only 9 bill, which is actually relatively cheap, but it ranges from around 9 to 11 billion silver. And the reason for this is that not only does it give you the all AP, the all accuracy, attack speed etc it also gives you three sheet ap so as i can show you now right now on my life scaler my ap is one six one four six and one four eight if i put this on it goes up to one four nine and one five one so that's really going to help you to um hit your ap brackets when you well when you need to and obviously it applies to your main hand and to your awakening hand so it's great for that as well the cheaper um, spirit stone of the bunch for AP is obviously going to be your destruction spirit stone. Gives you all AP plus six and all accuracy and obviously the attack and casting speed. Now it might not seem like a lot, but having this added bonus is always just going to be worth it. It's very cheap. It's only 2 million silver for quite a long time of extra added buffs just in the background and is obviously going to help with your grind speed. Then you've obviously got the DP stone, so Perilla Star, which some of you might not have, but if you do have, Perilla Star is actually a hidden gem. It's really good for staying alive. It gives you the 5% damage reduction from monsters, gives you all damage reduction, HP recovery on hit once again, health, etc. And then you've got the, once again, the less rare of the two, which is the Guardian Spirit Stone, which gives you damage reduction, evasion, and all HP. Now, depending on, like I said before, your situation and what you need, you could use a mix of all of these. But if you're in a space where you're taking too much damage, by far the best, um, the best combination of all of these to use would be Simple Corn Meal, Beast Drought, Calx Elixir, and then Perilla Star if you have it. If you don't have Perilla Star, then Garden Spirit Stone will do just as well. But with all of these added up, you're gonna have somewhere between 15 and 20% less damage from monsters, which is gonna help you to survive a lot. So as well as having the buffs that you can get from consumable items, you've also got buffs that you can get from around the world of Black Desert. One of these, or rather two of these, you can get from the Priest. And the two buffs that are gonna help with your grinding are attack and protection. So this is essentially attack damage ap and dp you've also got an experience buff which you can use if you are well, trying to level your character and each of these will cost five 1g gold bars so 500k per click now you can get anywhere from three to eight for each of these stats so i think the increments are three five and eight as you can see after purchasing that buff i got all ap plus five and all accuracy plus five but if i get the same buff again it should change. So I've got now all AP plus three and all accuracy plus eight. So you can play around with this and spend as much as you want to try and get the AP or DP buffs that you want to get. Um, obviously eight is the cap and depending on how lucky you are or how resilient you are, you can get the buffs that are going to suit you the, the most. Now, obviously spending money on this is going to eat into your profits a little bit as with buying perfumes and droughts and elixirs, etc. But they are going to give you that added edge in PVE. 
Another source of buffs that people are generally unaware of when it comes to BDO and just using them for grinding in general is your furniture buffs. Now I don't use these too often as they are sometimes expensive and you sometimes have to spend quite a lot of money to actually well just be able to use them but you can place them on your walls um, pretty easily if you go to the place mode in your residence and then when you walk up to them you can interact with them to gain a certain buff so this one gives me extra damage to humans which for example i'll use if i'm going to grand biragi den as human damage works at biragi if i'm not and i'm going somewhere else i can get for example max hp plus 100 if i wanted more max hp and there's also another one which is i believe begs knife or something like that and it gives you i believe i think extra 10 ap something along those lines but if you have a look at the furniture section on the central market you can actually come across quite a few decorations, not decorations, um, no, they are decorations, quite a few decorations that give you um, buffs. So this one, crit hit plus two for an hour, uh, max MP for an hour. Then the one that I mentioned before with the Beg's knife is, where is it? Let's find it so I can show you guys. Uh, there it is, Imp Catcher's knife, is all AP plus 15 for an hour. So things like this are just, generally going to be extremely useful especially when you're grinding and it's going to mean that you can kill quicker um but if you don't feel like spending the money in order to actually have these in your residence it's not essential just something that you should know about if you're really trying to min max and get every buff that you can possibly get the villa buff is a buff that is very useful but depending on your situation you may or may not want to bother with it so up by shakatu in the top right there is a villa called lohan's villa where you can get scroll body enhancement which is essentially a villa buff you pay a certain amount of silver for a buff that gives you all ap plus 10 and all dp plus 10 as well as a couple other substats now having this to grind with is going to be great and you can also get this buff from the villa scroll section of your tent if you have the pay to win tent if you do not have a um a secret book of old moon active then you actually can't use this unless you go over to buy the villa scroll for a week and then you can continue to use your tent for the rest of that week until that scroll expires but having this buff is going to be very good for your grinding as after purchasing it you've got all ap plus 10 all dp plus 10 max hp 200 percent all resistance 10 percent and ignore all resistance five percent so realistically you should be grinding with this if you can it's not too big of a deal if you can't be bothered realistically but for you guys that are really trying to increase your grind speed i would suggest getting the tent as it's arguably the most useful item you can get from the pole shop and secondly just being able to have your villa buff up at all times one extremely useful feature that you're going to use when you're grinding quite frequently is being able to overstack on your horse. So when you're at a grind spot, obviously, if you don't have much weight on your character, then you're going to become heavy and not be able to grind anymore pretty quickly. But one thing that a lot of people do not know is that if you have a horse nearby um, at the grind spot with you, which you should, then you can actually overstack on your horse. So this horse only has 164 weight limit, right? And clearly having 9,000 wheat flour, which I'm just using for the purpose of this example, um, is much heavier than that. So if I put it on, it's actually at 904 instead of 164. Now I'm gonna get some more so I can show you the way that you can overstack on your horse. So if you have too much trash and you can't move anymore, chuck it on your horse. And when you get to a stage where you've got some in your inventory and also some on the horse, you take out what you've got in your horse's inventory so that it comes, it goes into yours, which will obviously make you unable to move properly. And then you put the entire thing back in, which then means that your horse can hold up to, well, I mean, as much trash as you want it to until you want to go back to a village, to be honest. Um, and it just means that you're not, you don't have to worry about going back to get rid of your trash so that you can continue grinding because you can just overstack it on a horse. Just a little convenience tip and something that you should know about if you're planning to have long hours of grinding. One other thing that you need to be aware of, especially when you're grinding, is the use of your rage meter. And the reason I say this is because a lot of people have a tendency to use their rage skills for all of the fancy looking, crazy skills that, you know, are satisfying to look at but aren't exactly, well, the most efficient use of rage. In PvE, yes, these skills look nice and they do more damage put on, well, initial hit. But if you press the Z key, you can actually use your rage consume 100% of it to get a all AP plus 30 and attack speed plus 25% buff for 60 seconds. So instead of having one attack that just bursts down one pack, you actually get an entire minute's worth of increased damage 
and increased attack speed that will allow you to actually kill packs a lot quicker than if you weren't to use that so please don't use your rage on fancy skills as painful as it might be it's more efficient and you'll see an increase in your trash per hour if you just use it on the black spirits rage consumption option all right guys one thing to bear in mind is that regardless of how quickly you're grinding how many mobs you're killing how fast you're finishing the rotation factors like that your pets are still going to drastically affect the amount of trash loot that you're able to pick up per hour so if you don't have an entire set of t3 or t4 pets you're going to see a reduction in the amount of trash you can get as you're probably going to have to stop to pick up every so often places like se you might be able to get away with it as those mobs take a little bit longer to die so your pets will be able to still pick up everything efficiently but some other areas you're going to need to have higher tier pets and i'll show you the difference between them so t1 and t2 pets i believe have the same pickup rate you can change the pet command from normal to agile and that will actually increase the speed at which they pick up at the cost of using more stamina so if i show you on normal this pet has a pickup of once every 10 seconds whereas if i change it to agile that pickup changes to once every nine seconds and because of that it means that they're able to pick up trash more efficiently and in short if you look at a t3 pet t3 pets pick up every 2.7 seconds on agile and on normal they pick up every three seconds and that's a little bit faster with t4 pets at 2.25 seconds so your aim should be to have an entire set of t4 pets which is quite difficult to come across but obviously uh, pearl abyss give away sometimes t4 pets in um events sometimes they give away pets for free that you can smash together to try and get a higher tier and the longer you play the game the higher rate of well the increased chances of you getting a higher tier pet as you're going to end up with more in general that's going to be it for today guys i hope this video did help if it did don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment as it helps this video get out there to more people make sure to leave a sub for more content in the future and if you do have any other questions leave them down below and i'll be happy to respond to you guys and i will see you on the next video peace